I'm Ron, I teach at Bellevue University. I've been using technology since yeah, I was little. I feel naked unless I have at least two or three computers on me at all times. I also believe in complete backup and redundancy in everything. So yes, I actually do have two smartwatches on, both a Fitbit and an iWatch. <laughs> So, actually, I just got the iWatch, so I'm still transitioning over. But I have numerous philosophies, one being trust but verify. So you don't have to believe anything I say. Please verify. I mean, there's some folks in the room who know me, and you can turn to them, like Chris, and a few of the others. So let's talk about what is the footprint. Well, we're going to start, actually, with a great resource. How many of you have a small or medium business? Okay. Small and medium businesses, or even a large business. This is the framework that pretty much every business is now following for cybersecurity. It comes from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, paid for by our tax dollars. And it's a simple five-step process. The Better Business Bureau has had folks discussing this in the past. I'll go through a couple of these in more detail, like identify. That's the footprint. What do you have out there? Protect. How do you protect what you got? How do you know when something bad happens? What do you do when something bad happens? Who do you call? Ghostbusters. Anyway, no, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters might not be able to help you. And then how do you recover your business? And Jeff, I'm going to drive you nuts because I like to wander around. That's anyway, okay. I like driving Jeff nuts anyway. NIST.gov slash cyber framework free resource. Crown jewels. You think about crown jewels like at the Tower of London, right? And who here has been to the Tower of London? Okay, a few. Kind of protected pretty well, right? I mean, you can't bring in cell phones, they have guards all over, cameras. Think about your crown jewels. If you have something to write with, write down what they are. So, shout out, what are some of the crown jewels for you either personally or in your business? Customer contacts. Customer contacts. Why is that important? You don't want the competition to get them. You don't want the competition to get them. Yep. Can I have them? <laughs> what else? That's a bank, great example. Bank accounts. bank accounts. For the obvious reason. Why do the bad guys rob banks? Where the money is? Yeah. What was that? Willie Sutton or something said that? Like the uh, 1800s? So your bank account information. But not only just the bank account number. Because if I just see bank account numbers, may or may not be able to help me. I need your name associated with it. So it could be personally identifiable information, PII. So this is where we start. What are you protecting? And it's not just about data. It could be our systems. You know, I need to keep my email server up. I want to keep my web server up because if my web server goes down, I'll lose clients. What about people? Who here has kids? You want to keep them safe online, right? My kids are my crown jewels. Employees, your clients, you want to protect them. The idea here is to understand what, what you are protecting. So write it down, the list of just two to three things. Make sure you know why you are doing it, because it gets into something called a risk appetite. What are you willing to do to protect those? How much risk are you willing to take with it? Some of these are a lot longer conversations than we have for this morning. I'm planting a lot of seeds with this. Uh, for example, I teach at Bellevue. My students will sometimes put their papers out in cloud, cloud storage, like OneDrive, Box, Dropbox. What do you think? Is that good? Who says yes? <clears throat> Who says no? Who's, <laughs> Who's got no idea? It's actually a great place for the cloud. Because it's just college papers. If it gets out, really no harm can be done, right? That's the risk appetite. You know, if the confidentiality is disclosed. There's something known as the CIA of security. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. Maybe integrity, you don't want anyone messing with your college paper. And you want to make sure your paper is there when your professor wants to read it, right? So keep that in mind with the data as well. All right, so next step. This comes back, or comes to this, what's called the Center for Internet Security. They are an international group 
that has 20 steps. 20 steps to being secure. Step number one, know what you got. How do you protect something if you don't know it's there? Have any of you ever looked to see what you have on your home network? Yeah, you might. I mean, to see how many of your neighbors are using your Wi-Fi or stealing your Netflix, right? So that's step number one, is knowing what's on your network. And there's many different tools I can show you some other time on how we can actually map computer networks. This tool's been around for a long time. There's also <laughs> software, though. What applications have you loaded? Whether it's on a smart device, on a PC, the reason why there's danger there, well, you need to make sure they stay updated, right? Because they may have a vulnerability. I might find you're running an old version of Adobe. I send you a specially crafted spear phishing file like you'll hear about in the other sessions. It takes advantage of that. Another issue with applications is if you're supposed to be paying for licenses, like you get a free version for home use, and you're using it in your business, you could get a knock on the door by the BSA. I'm not talking the nice Boy Scouts of America. No, this is the Business Software Alliance who will fine, and they have fined businesses tens of thousands of dollars. So it's not as much of a security issue, but knowing what you're running on it. And then as we mentioned, personally identifiable information. What info do you have out there? Okay, so you need to write down what you own. Because then the next step is, what might be hiding? <laughs> Who here has an Amazon Alexa or Echo <coughs> or Google Home or Siri or Cortana? I mean, between all four of those, you have one of them, maybe even multiple. Do you allow them in your business environment? So you have an employee, and you're like, can I just bring in, Chris, can I bring in a, a Bluetooth speaker? Because I like to listen to music. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah. Sure. And then you find out it's an Amazon Alexa. It's always on and listening. Mm -hmm. And now you have something known as an IoT, Internet of Things device, inside of your network. That people may bring in. And, you know, they just want to listen to music. They don't realize that they could be causing a problem with it. Or the microwave. You know you can get an Amazon Alexa microwave now, right? <laughs> so, I mean, we've gone from the point where our internet you know, was uh, protected against nuclear attacks, but now it's vulnerable against our toasters. You, know, <laughs> you want your watch to tell you when your toast is ready, right? That's what I mean, what's hiding in your network. That's part of the digital footprint, what's inside. So I mentioned internet of things. And then applications. What apps are you running? You know, like even on your phone, because all of these could be ways into your digital lives. So some examples of apps on here, like Skype and Snap and Slack and WhatsApp and Facebook and FaceTime and Twitter and Instagram and Zoom. <coughs> all of these ways into our digital lives, right? That's part of your footprint. It's also what you put out there. I've often seen well-intentioned employees who sometimes pose a, a large threat not meaning to. For example, you know, hey, I, I want to work this weekend from home, Greg, so I'm going to take our whole customer list and download it on my thumb drive so I can run it on my home PC. Mm -hmm. What's the problem with that? I'm working from home. Okay, I'm going to put in my own time. That's good, right? Leave that in the coffee shop or wherever. Bingo. Is this thing encrypted? Yeah, I'll just take yours. Right. So what files do you have out there? And it could be inside your network, or it could be, you know, I emailed the file to myself to my Gmail account, or I put it out into some type of a cloud storage. That's all part of why you need to have this asset inventory and know what is out there. So what's hiding on the internet? I kind of already mentioned websites. How many of you have a, a business website? Have you ever checked to see how up to date it is? Or do you have any old files out there? So I have some, I have my hacking laptop. I don't have it plugged in for some reason, Metro won't allow me anyway. That's for sure. 
There's tools called Spiderfoot or Shodan or Census that you can use to map your website. And what I can do is create a whole duplicate of your website and find all of those old files out there. It's known as a spider that Google uses to search because okay. sometimes the trick with these sessions, I sometimes forget what I've already mentioned. Did I already ask what's the world's number one hacking tool? No. So what is the world's number one hacking tool? What are your guesses? Google. Say that again. Google. Be Google. It is Google. People is a close second. Google is the internet's vacuum cleaner, sucking up information from all over. If I want to find out everything I can about the BBB website, but I don't want to touch it, Jim back there will know that I did, or particularly Jeff, give me a call. I look to see what Google has about it. And there's a lot of other websites I can look at too that pull all sorts of what's called reconnaissance about a website. And you know, once something is put out there on the internet, it's there for yeah. ever. We try to tell that to our kids, right? You know, as they post all of these pictures. So what, that part of our digital footprint, what are we putting out on our social media? Do you have a social media policy for your employees, what they're allowed to say out on social media? Well, they shouldn't say. Because in the heat of the moment, say something, and then you delete it. But as we find out with a certain politician, once it's out there, Someone will pull it down. So creating a social media policy. And then I already mentioned the cloud. Cloud can be a great, very cost-effective mechanism. It comes down to enacting some rules around it. A couple of other topics I wanted to talk about. Any former military here? So, so what's awesome? What's up there? Well, sorts of intelligence. <laughs> it's how I was an intel officer actually during the first uh, Gulf War. And our best intel was off in CNN. So what is other people saying about it? And that's what we mean by open source. Can we find out about your organization? How many of you have, or let me ask you this, how many of you don't have a Facebook account? So, good. Give me about 10 minutes and you will. <laughs> um, because you've leaked your information and me being a hacker, I see your name. Based on your name, then I can do some lookups. You know, I know you're in the Nebraska area. I can create a whole account. So that's actually why I recommend create your own accounts. You don't even have to do very much with them. But this way, you own it. And if anyone ever asks about your account, you can say, this is my official one. You say, well, I saw something like that. No, that's the fake me. The other top tool I often use as part of my hacking, if you will, is LinkedIn. Because I can create a whole organizational chart just on LinkedIn. I can then use that for spear phishing. And phishing, by the way, is never going to go away. We do all we can to stop it using technology. But the way the bad guys are working is they have humans attacking. And it's very hard to stop. And there are many others. So protect the others. We'll talk a lot more about protect. And mention, number one, have strong company policies, even if you're a small business. They don't have to be long and complex. State what the rules are. That way, an employee can't come in and say, well, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to plug in my Alexa. Or I didn't know I shouldn't put files on a thumb drive. why we have the speed limits up. You know, to make sure people are informed of what the rules are. And there's no confusion about them. Security awareness, why we do this here at Better Business. Please share what you are learning. Um, I don't have the slide on this. I think maybe one of my compatriots have it. But uh, staysafeonline.org. Staysafeonline.org. This is the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Free. Most cheap like me and like free stuff. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. If you have an employee newsletter and you're like, oh, I'd love to get an article on cybersecurity, go to staysafeonline.org and you can pull down their articles. Take it 100%, put your logo on it, and ship it out to your employees. 
And they're like, awesome, do that. It's completely open because they want to get the word out. These are some of the technical things, and the others will we'll talk about these. Um, oh, the other one for security awareness, please write this one. Virustotal.com. Virustotal.com. Total? Total. T-O-T-A-L. So, Greg, have you ever gotten like a weird file from somebody and they're like, hey, you need to open this? Mm -hmm. You know, you owe me money, this is the invoice. You know, and of course, I'm sending it to you, so you don't trust me at all. Greg and I go back 20 years, and of course he doesn't trust me, so. <laughs> he can upload it to virustotal.com, and it runs it against like 60 different antivirus programs. So you might just go, well, I have my antivirus program. Most antivirus programs are only about 50% effective. Or you get a weird link. Hey, go to this link, check this out. Uh, I'm gonna run it through virustotal, because they also have a URL detector as well. Please share those. Okay, so something really bad happens to you. Who are you going to call? I'm waiting for someone to say it. <laughs> Ghostbusters, it's Halloween, come on. Okay, Ghostbusters won't help you with this, but the FBI will, and the Department of Homeland Security. All right, so there's what, 30 people in this room? If I stole, like, 10 bucks from each of you, you'd be like, oh, it's just 10 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't report it. So 10 times 30, this is advanced math, it's like 300, like Anyway, <laughs> by reporting it, it becomes very evident to the FBI that it's a problem. Hey, everyone in room two during the BBB session, you know, got robbed. Now they can find that source. I was working with a, a lighting company, of all things. They got ransomware. Find out what ransomware is. They lock up your computer, and they had to pay $3,000 in Bitcoin. And they had no idea how to do Bitcoin. So, did you ever report it? Well, it was only $3,000. Still report. Same thing, local police. The police can't do anything. You have the official record. This is the Department of Homeland Security, your tax dollars at work. You've already paid for this. They will actually come out and do security assessments, perform what's known as a security penetration test. It's a technical test on your network. I just got an email or a, a letter from CHI Lakeside that they had a ransomware and tell me my, my stuff's been compromised. Did you know about that? I didn't hear about that. I, I've been out of town, so. This was, uh, they said, last, uh, last winter. Oh, last winter, yeah. So that's also why I don't have on here talking to an attorney, it's because Nebraska does have a state data breach notification law in place. Jim, did you have something? So the CISA, yes. they do this for free? Yes. It's Department of Homeland Security. Greg Holland said, do you know Greg? If you don't know Greg Holland said, Greg, we need to make sure we get you guys introduced. Um, Greg has been in DHS in the area for 15, 20 years often gives presentations on this. Same thing with the FBI. It's really trying to get the word out on all of this. So free resources. Um, reporting <coughs> forms. You can report it to It's known as the Computer Emergency Response Team. Talk to your police. Talk to your bank. Insurance. An attorney. The important thing with the attorney is because then you can establish client attorney <coughs> privilege. If something bad happens, please report it. Reach out for help. There are ways we might be able to unlock the ransomware. Or if you see, it's known as business email compromise. And that is my basic talk about protecting yourself and understanding what is your digital footprint, starting from assets to what are your crown jewels, to knowing some basics about protecting and then responding.